So the third quarter Manhattan market report just got released. And of course, everybody's talking about it, scrutinizing it, trying to infer things from the statistics in it. I think it's uh, interesting to discuss, kind of to look at what's in it um, and talk about where we can extract real value from that and where it can be a little bit misleading, especially to some of our clients out there that may not you know, be focusing on this every day and putting a little more context into the numbers that are, that are cited there. Uh, because you know, I don't think it really accurately portrays whether um, buyers still have a demand to buy, which I believe they definitely do, and whether they have the ability to buy. I think it has to do a lot more with inventory and with uh, supply side economics coming into play there. What are your thoughts, Frank, on I completely agree with you. I think a lot of what we do, we have to take clients' concerns, which you know I categorize as headline risk, because they see the paper, they see a quarterly report, and they think that you know <clears throat> that, that, that's just what they base their decision on. But sometimes you have to kind of read the article, right? And if you look at the if you look at the if you look at the market right now, right? There's st buyers still have confidence, right? So they still have the ability to buy. Mortgages are still. The mortgage market is very vast, right? There's a lot of competition for buyers' mortgages, right? Banks are using mortgages to bring in clients, mm -hmm. right? So there's not, so there's still a, a, a wide array of financing available for sure. clients, right? That's number one. Sure. You know, rates are still at historically low levels, sure. right? So Just I, for, for the audience to know, uh, Bank of America recently closed a loan for me and my wife and we were still able to get it done with only 20% down and a rate that's in the threes. So, you know, for those people seeing 5% in the headlines, that's not necessarily true. And headlines like to sensationalize as much as possible. So they usually take the outlier and make that the, um, the, uh, the rule instead of the exception. But right. um, it's 100% yeah, I mean, right. They're going to, they're gonna, they're, you know, uh, to sell a newspaper, you put in, you know, you put in the highest rate or uh, uh, worst case scenario. Again, it's headline risk, right? That clients have to take that and then go speak to an ex expert and talk to a few people about your mortgage, and you'll see that that's not where rates are uh, across the board. And sometimes the Fed raising the rate doesn't correlate directly to your mortgage rate going up, right? right. There's other factors at play, so it's important to. It's important not to believe the headline and kind of get into, you know, get into the professionals that deal with this on a day-in-day -day basis. Because if you look at the quarterly report, which is a really interesting read from Compass. Yeah, and it's a great guide. Right, it's a great guide. But you need the human side to kind of decode it a little bit. And you need the people that are doing it every day, speaking to people in the market. I think that, you know, you, you're speaking with buyers that are confident about purchasing. They're not saving up to buy. They're not concerned about when they're going to be able to buy. You know, you're not doing a two-year plan for someone to buy. You're speaking to clients that would buy if they found the right deal. And I think that that's a lot of what the report is telling you is that they're you're having clients that are, you know, you're having, you know, buyers and sellers are trying to meet this demand together, right? And thank God that we're in a situation because that there are buyers out there with the ability to buy and they're confident, right? It doesn't, they might not be willing to pay today's prices or they might be looking for what they consider value. And that might mean that sellers have to kind of drop prices to meet those buyers' demands. But those buyers' demand, if you think about it, are creating a confidence for that prices aren't gonna come through there, right? It's not like the financial crisis where, you know, people were out of jobs, right? I mean, you have the lowest employment rate in the country in God knows how long, right? Now you have wages starting to pick up, right? And the next thing in, ec in economics would be that if wages, if the tighter that jobs get, right, the job market gets, in order to get that talent, get that labor, employers are gonna have to pay more money, right? And that's gonna increase wages, right? Sure. So now you're in a situation where people's purchasing power is picking up, and you know, between that and a huge urbanization that's happening in the country, like jobs are coming to the city. You see a lot of these commercial buildings going up, right? Those right. are all good signs for employment and housing is just an effect. Uh, uh, housing is a direct correlation of employment. So that you have a you have a confidence. The for fundamentals it. are there. The fundamentals um, are all there, and I think that that doesn't play today. That might play in a month, and it's important to kind of get in line to make a good value. Sure, I want to touch on that a little more and put it into the 
context of headlines, um, you know, if pricing goes down right now, usually it's, it's, it's merely a supply of very healthy supply and demand. Um, it's a function of supply and demand. Uh, it's not what he was describing, which 10 years ago, the pricing went down because there, there weren't buyers that existed. They had lost their jobs. Employment was in shambles. It was going to hell in a handbasket. Um, that was a consequence almost directly of the failure in MBSs and mortgage-backed securities, which were tied into terribly underwritten loans. So the underwriting practices uh, that, that went into these toxic kind of, um, kind of MBSs are not in place right now. We do not want to conflate the two. You still need a minimum of a 700 FICO in most cases to get a mortgage. You need you know, 15%, 20% as a down payment. There's no more 80-20 you know, loans right. for the most part. Um, you know, no, people are documenting their income. I mean, the yeah, mortgage market. There, there are no gone, stated loans. Right. right. The mortgage that, market the has, gone, has, got, has gotten a lot. Has, has become a lot more valid since you know the impl implementation of Dodd Frank, which has regulations like ability to repay. And every, there's everything is is proven up. So it's 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 strong. It's you know that you're not you're, there's not a shoe waiting to drop on a bad credit. Policy. Sure. So we've got employment that's strong and steady, you know, a population that continues to grow, a student base that's really, really um, healthy. We all know that higher education students, the next step is entry-level white-collar positions. And that, you know, overflows directly into the luxury rental market, and then after that, into the first purchaser market. So as long as those fundamentals are in place, and New York remains, a you know a beacon of, of of hope and and of aspiration for everybody around the world, whether it be in Asia, South Asia, um, Europe, South America. We have an influx of people from every corner of the world continuing to come in. So we have availability to access credit. We still have foreign buyers as well that have the purchasing power to do all cash transactions. So, so everything we need to keep a market flowing is there. Um, with no demand, there is no market, but we have demand. We just have more supply than normal, and we're in an absorption process right now. So I, I think that, that really is important to know so people don't mistake this with, with anything that happened 10 years ago, even if a, a market is a little bit slower or more relaxed than in 2013. And you, truth be told, the, the other part about it is, you know, what's the next? If you if you're on the fence today, right, and you're deciding it, and you realize, like, okay, this isn't a situation that is, you know, Lehman Brothers is collapsing, all these jobs are going away. You know, it's not that situation, right? So I think that yeah, casts a very not. long shot, right? Still yeah. today, that any any sort of dip. People started yelling recession, pullback, exactly. all this stuff. And right. I think if you're just looking at economic fundamentals that there's a lot of supply out there, right? And remember, when you see condo buildings going up, when you see commercial buildings going up, new rental buildings going up, there's tons of underwriters behind those decisions. There's a lot of money invested in there. So they have global for forecasts, they have, you know, they have ideas of where the market's gonna be or they won't be putting up those buildings. And sure. I think that, you know, there's a lot of confidence from that side as well. The other point is that the you don't know where the other demand is going to come from, right? Like you don't know where what demand is going to be on the other side of what on the other side of the horizon, right? So international demand, you know, if that gets back to where it was, tariffs cool off, everybody makes a deal, everybody's friends again. You know, they're going to look at America's open for business again. If America's open for business, it's New York City. You know, that's where people want to live. Right? Sure. You know, it's tough to name secondary cities in other countries, but you can name, you know, they have the same issue here. They, everyone can name New York, everyone can name Hong Kong, London. So I think that when demand does come back, people aren't gonna have this decision-making time of what's happening here. I think you're seeing a little demand pull back from some areas. If you're a domestic client living in the city, 
here in New York. You know, you're 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 seeing a lot of things every day that you think the prices might come back a little bit. But you know, if demand picks up in one side, it's going to affect everyone. It might, you know, it it might be time for people to just kind of make a decision on you know, do they want to buy a property here? Sure. I think also uh, another burgeoning sector in New York, even though we've had computers for a long time, is the tech sector. That you know, traditionally we always had doctors and lawyers and finance professionals um, kind of kind of out there as your your prime target uh, when you're selling real estate. In the last ten years, even the amount of startups, venture capital money that is that has just exploded into the scene. Um, and the employment spillover that's, that, that's created, whether it be with the growth of Facebook, Amazon, um, you know, smaller companies that you may not know on a global level, but that have hyper-local presence here in New York and great money behind them, these people all need housing. And that's only gonna continue to grow. Tech is going nowhere but north. So, Ooh, think about it. Amazon, right? They haven't settled on what their second city is going to be on the East Coast. Uh, there's a short list. New York is still on it, but I believe so is Newark, and so are some of these other Northeast kind of cities. And you know, if if Amazon opens up a opens up a second hub within what 100 100 miles of, of New York City, that's going to put housing demand on New York City. Sure. People are going to, going to want to come and Get live here, market. stay here. So you know, there's Investment a lot of market. There's a lot of un unforeseen demand out there that, you know, that's what's, in any investment decision, that's what's tough to, you don't know who you're competing with always, and, you know, sometimes people, I mean, how many times have you done a, have you, have you been in a deal with someone, and they're like, going up against someone, they're bidding it back and forth, and they're like, oh, I wish it wouldn't be like this, but it's kind of funny, you're either in that market, or you're in the sit and wait market, you know, and it's, I think sometimes people have to understand you know, is this, you know, it, just because I don't feel the demand, it's still out there. Sure, and psychology has a huge part of this. People tend to want what they think they can't get. So what's good is that everybody is pretty much able to buy. Um, it's the same as five years ago. The only big difference is that there's more supply out there. Right. So the more choices there are and the more let's say in one specific circumstance, they may encounter a developer that's really eager to sell, that impression on them may make them feel, wow, I have my pick of the litter, I feel more powerful, I, have, I feel like I have more leverage, and then they are more relaxed in their search. But as soon as that tide turns again, and we see full absorption, which we can debate about when that's gonna happen, but, um, it will happen, and we saw it happen after 2008, once we got to 2012 and 13. Um, granted, that, that, that also had a, you know, that was preceded by kind of a lull in, in development to begin with, but what I saw with my own eyes was that people with purchasing power, when they saw there were fewer choices and more people at the open houses and in the sales centers, they wanted it more to the point where they would even make, um, you know, irrational or or hasty uh, offers that were well above market price. So psychology is 80, 90 percent of the business, and I'm very bullish on on the future. I think that as long as as sellers become more and more realistic, and and the numbers kind of match where someone perceives value, they will jump on it. Um, so the money is there, the purchase power is there, and as we see larger institutional buyers maybe buy up blocks of things, that'll help accelerate some of the, the excess um, supply. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go back to seeing a scramble for condominiums again. That's gonna push prices right back up. New York should never be underestimated.